that we are oh, going no. to the game. It's going to start. I love listening to you, but maybe later. <laughs> FaZe versus NIP. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go indeed. Honestly, shocks. If, I, I don't know how you did it. You, she just shut Chad up in less than two seconds. I've never been able to do yeah, that. Yeah, she needs to teach the rest of us yeah. how to do that. Uh, meanwhile, though, we should get getting, uh, going Let's into go. the game. Let's go. It's happening. Exactly. Yes, because we're in the pistol round here. Face Clan versus NIP. Obviously, a uh, pretty storied matchup just in itself. NIP, surprising. Yeah, we've got another cast going on, but we are on the map. And I think we're totally fine now. So here yes, we are. We are. In the first round, Bomb's gotten planted. T's have five up. Ents are have only lost Ariel and have got some utility left over. So what will the play be? Well, looks like that Z retake. Cold Zera doubling back into the A site. Not going to find his headshot, unfortunately. But Alexi taps the bomb. Tries to get these T's to peek out in the after plant. And Phelps will fall. Down goes Taco. Shell crushed. And that right there is Ents with a retake. Yeah, they performed the retake. They did it with just four people up, which is already such a such a difficult thing to do. And they had uh, they had wasted kind of a lot of time after losing their initial player. So Ents go up uh, one one round so far. It's going to be one of the first tournaments or the first actual offline tournament to use the new economy system. So that'll be a talking point. It's not something we want to drive into the ground. Something we'll probably save for if there's like some kind of break, some yeah. kind of delay. You know, not around with like you know five deagles launders. Right. That's uh yeah. That's <laughs> that's gonna take all of our attention. So we have a deco out for MIBR. Um, Fur has spent a little bit more money than everybody else, grabbing half armor as well. Uh, two augs still in play, which is also another question mark. How many how many augs are gonna be bought in each of these matches? And we're starting to get those answers as. It looks like Ents have taken ladder control. And the T's have fanned out across the map. Clock ticks down. No one's here to make a move quite yet, but Taco has vision on the B side. Yeah, and Phelps, well, he's actively challenging this Ivy side. So it is MIBR just kind of testing the waters all across the map. They've spread themselves through the ocean. And Alu comes crashing down into that first frag of the round. Taco gonna take damage here, had a chance at the headshot, right? And that's what you're playing for with those deagles. You're, you're not gonna get many opportunities before the bigger weapons start tearing straight through you. So sure enough, Fallen will make the most of it. He had already lost two players on his team. It is a response, sure, but it kind of comes late as the rest of the terrorists just dwindle down and reveal themselves. They are sure enough doing damage, but no additional follow-up frags, no creation of space, no opportunity for Cold Zera to sprint that bomb into the site. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could get that plant and get back your deagle money, then they're good to go. But it doesn't seem to be the case here. A lot of things will change, uh, especially when you have to practice against uh, th this new economy. We're already seeing like a strong buyout for ENS, which I think is an interesting talking point. And because they had a lot of security in that round, they kept four up. They retained a lot of the good weapons that they bought. And, and most importantly, didn't hand them over to the other team to kill them with. So five AKs now will be purchased for MIBR. So we move into round three. Um, ENS don't have too much to worry about. They're going to go ahead and buy up the rest of their grenades in full, apart from Alu, who's only holding on to an HE, which is actually somewhat interesting. I don't know if that means he's going to try to perform a push. They know that MIBR have enough money to buy here, um, and so we'll see what his next move is going to be. Looks like he's just sitting top blue at the moment. Another default here for MIBR. Taco, the Lone Ranger, holding on to inner. Sergey perusing the site. Exchange of utility all over the board. Again, I mean, MIBR, they're playing this one split. Similar to the previous round, just this time with those guns. And it's Ents to make the first forward motion here. Walking through T-Con, positioning Ariel as close as can be. Now, that's going to mitigate the disadvantage of playing off that UMP. We talked about the AUGs, but I love this. I love seeing a little diversity in my weapons with Counter-Strike. So double M4, double AUG, plus an ump, and still grenades all around. 50 seconds hits the clock, and we've got MIBR now starting to pose themselves towards this B site. We've had Taco here over and over, and now he's finally going to have some help. Indeed he will. 
Well, it's decision making time up to 40 seconds in the round. Phelps is really aggressive on the lurk. He's also making a ton of noise over at Ivy. So that's going to make it difficult for Ents to try to make a move off of this information. But with T-Con control, they are going to hold on to the rotates for a moment. Now Phelps, with the assistance of the smoke, has actually made his way out into a duel. And if he takes this one, Inner is going to get crushed. Sergey all alone at the back of schools. Yeah, although he got drawn away. So Sergey, can he do this? He nails himself two players at least. And Alu just back into position has found himself one of his own. But it's cold Zara to the top side. And as he fires down, he only manages just one kill. So with six seconds left, Phelps, well, they lost track of where he's at, but fortunately for Entz, he's not getting into any trouble. It's a tough mid-round call to decide for Phelps what he's gonna what he's gonna do. He's been spotted, he's in CT spawn. He has a duel that's not favored towards him, but if he lets Alu go, as we saw, then he can go back and assist his teammate Sergey Inner, who's in a very precarious spot. So Sergey makes the most of it, gets two kills. That's that's definitely more than you can ask for. And um, Alu comes in afterwards to pick up a third kill, and they, they shut down that split. It was a good attempt, and, and they kind of left it to the end of the round, which I think opened up doors for MIBR in terms of scaring Ents into not rotating, but ultimately could not make more of that. And uh, I think, first and foremost, couldn't get the kills necessary uh, to, to make this round any easier. Three Deagles here for MIBR. Fallen's picked up a scout, and uh, Phelps will be the only one who saved a gun uh, on this AK. Cold Zera tagged down to past half HP. And X7 is playing aggressively on the opposite side of the smoke. But it seems like his plan is to leave when it dissipates. Not before he throws out a flashbang. Does blind Phelps very successfully. And in fact, he's not going to go any further back. He's going to linger around just a bit longer. I mean, it's enabled by the fact that he does have a player just next to him by the Ivy train. He's successful with two kills off that MP9. Mm. It's not supposed to unfold like that, but excellently done. Now, Alexi takes one down at the knees. Four versus two, single scout and play with Fallen, and Taco still just hoping to find a headshot here from the top rope. But yeah. he's the last man up. Can't find that elusive Sergey, who's actually repositioned in the round. Does get taken down, and sure enough, that's a plant. So, MIBR happy. How much more, though? Three TTs still up. Taco spotting bodies, missing headshots, however. Yeah, and that was an imperative plan. It was an incredible 1D, but, and it resulted in them being able to, to uh, supplant their economy heavily. So it looks like a, 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 a pause will be called for the moment. I believe Ence is calling attack here um, because of a dead microphone, one of the minor issues that we'll experience. Uh, so far, so good, though, for Ents as they, they hold on to another one. Lots of money here for MIBR to work with. We'll certainly see Fall and pick up an AWP. He is going to grab that. Everybody else, uh, most likely the AKs. Um, the, the, that round was kind of a throwaway right off. There's not much to, to say about the implications of that um, and what Ents might try to take from that into this round. We know that the, the thing that MIBR tried to harp on last time was after their default failed they went for an inner hit and then use Phelps as this Phelps as this loose lurk in a 4-1 and that's not a style that MIBR are always using but um, we are probably going to see a lot of new stuff because Phelps is a re-addition to the team there's been lots of time played without him certainly imagine you'd want to try to reconfigure strategies and uh, highlight his presence uh, in the in the game as somebody who is extremely kind of at, like he's, he's extremely able as an individual um, and I, I could totally see why they want to use him as a lurk or an aggressive lurk or a playmaker or an entry, something uh, as more of a solo role. How are you feeling, Launders, just about uh, about this MIBR project as of late? You know, there's there's that trend, right? The, yeah. the returning to the roots, all these successful lineups of, of years past, mm -hmm. you know, they, they find themselves no longer as successful, and then they see the, the revamping of the rosters. Fanatic, now, of course, MIBR. Mm -hmm. Do you, are, are you happy so far with what you've seen from this team? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We have only really Katowice to go off of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's not that much data, but when we look at the major, we see they played like an extra BO3 in the top eight as compared to Liquid, yeah. and, and Liquid haven't played a lot either, apart from I Buy Power, so so I think there's more data there for MIBR, and it's a lot of good results, too. I mean, they took out Renegades, and that was a 2-0. It was a hard-fought 2-0, but it was versus the Renegades that were very powerful. Of course. And then they moved on to play against Astralis, that overpass match against Astralis. I think they got more rifle rounds than Astralis did and still lost because Astralis got two of their pistols. So I think there was a huge potential for a third map in that series. I think there was a lot to show from them, and that is really interesting. I believe the last time they had Phelps on the team, they did make top eight, and then after that major, he just, for some reason, didn't want to play, went back to Brazil. Um, 
Um, but there was a lot of untapped potential, I think, that they wanted to work with. And and I remember Fel Fallen in an interview saying that he didn't exactly understand why Phelps wanted to leave and that Phelps was kind of a hard person to read and talk to. Right. But it wasn't it wasn't like an issue of toxicity. It wasn't an issue of performance. They kind of had all of those things in spades. And so I, I feel like it makes sense that he comes back into the roster. And there's plenty of times where someone comes back into a roster, it doesn't make sense. But with Phelps, they kind of left almost on a high. Um, you know, maybe maybe they would have liked to have like, won the major. You know, they had to kind of set that precedent for themselves. But still, it was early with them, and and uh, I, I think to be reasonable, getting top eight was still quite good. Or top four, excuse me. I think I believe it's top four because they would have been in top eight already, because they're always in top eight. Of course, you've been excused. I'll Thank let you. this one slide. Appreciate it. We shall see if yep. this pesky CT will slide through the d offense as well. That may not be prepared for somebody being so aggressively positioned. Think about how Sergey was playing at the bottom of the ladder behind the bomb site itself. Now we have this more proactive position, but there's not really any support here for him. So he needs crisp aim. Who's on the other side? Potential first victim in Cold Zera sees the grenades being thrown and strikes immediately. Simultaneous frags coming in off of Alu. That was, you know, any kind of support. That back deep opper. He draws the player inwards. Fur then gets the trade frag, but Fallen misses his opportunity to drop Sergey, who is still a nuisance until now. 50 seconds left in the round. Fur down the ramp on 4 HP. Three CTs on the other side, but there's options for MIBR. Yeah, there's, an, there's a huge potential here for Fur, even though he's so low on HP. It doesn't seem like there's a grenade that can take him out. So if he stays hidden behind this train, waits long enough, MIBR can activate a different option, whether that's rotating back or re-aggressing on B, and already have somebody as a front man that, that ants are not, not completely sure about. So here it is, Fallen making his way back down to the ramp. I don't know if he's going to go ahead and take the bomb. He's known to do that. And they do the jump to make sure that they can kill a rotator or anybody there that's meant to be camping in Z. And again, he's got to go plant. So this is one reason you don't like to see this that often. Oh, oh. Ariel, all three. And just like that, it's Ents on fire. I mean, you saw MIBR, they were trying to play that fake rotate. Two players run away from box halls, stampeding through the bathrooms, but it's all a ruse. They're hoping that there's actually an Ents member beneath them. Wasn't the case. So Ents are just left walking back and forth, and Ariel walks into a blind side. Second player couldn't drop him. Phelps, I mean, I feel like he had ample opportunity to get that kill. Yeah. That's a bit of a struggle. For sure. Also considering that, you know, he's still a goose egg on the scoreboard. Yeah, he kind of popped out of the blue, but that was an angle that Fallen was holding for so long. It was just that time was pressing them to the point that they had to, they, had, they knew that MIBR had to make a decision. And it's so much easier for them to get to be through the lower ramp than it is to get to the outside plant spot from ladder or T-Con. So he took the peak as you normally would. And again, because Fallen had the bomb, he had to let go of the angle he was holding for the past 15 seconds, and uh, it was kind of on his teammates who couldn't deliver to get that kill. Um, unlucky for MIBR. Ooh, Ariel's found an opener. A lot of resistance going down on Ivy, but the resistance comes both ways. Cold Zera strikes, retrieves the AK-47, and decides to tuck tail. But not very far. He actually sits around towards Ivy because we do have MIBR enveloping this A bomb site. And it seems like Ants are going to be content with this. They're sitting on top of the site itself, looking to play numbers. They definitely have that advantage here in the 4v3. Fallen on a sliver of health will walk out, and he's caught. It's Ariel with an additional kill, and Taco tries to blindside him, but what are you going to do? What he's got that do? cover of E box. Even the second CT deep is not going to have eyes on Taco, so he actually has a chance here. May have just been spotted, sure enough. Alexi finds him, and Cold Zera has been sectioned out of this gunfight since he got his paws on that AK. That was almost a world-class world bait, right? I mean, seeing the barrel there, you'd think, okay, well, someone might move around to the other side, but it was, I guess, a bit too obvious for Ents. Maybe they did that on purpose. It's hard to say, but uh, yeah, Taco totally got played there. MIBR moved into the A site with kind of a constricting pace, yeah. taking Ivy slowly, having a person available in T-Con and then ladder as well. But uh, beyond that point, Ents knew exactly what kind of bed they had made. They knew that they were going to have to fight against all these choke points, but they didn't want to get too aggressive, and it te turned out to be the correct decision. Um, now we're back into another full buy. Um, Ents looking for seven rounds. This would be quite the upset, even though Ents are, as Maniac mentioned, one of the very best trained teams in the world. Um, I'm a person who's called Fallen the King of Train for so long just because of how much innovation he's put on this map. But here we are into the action in round seven. Yeah, it's Sergey once more dropping bombs down into the bomb site, dropping bodies with them. 
of course, and Coldzera unable to get any kind of a trade. He may be anticipating Alu in the back of the bomb site, looking to get that counter op pick. You know, that was a key piece to Ence's B defense in prior rounds, in addition to Sergey, who's already popped off with a 2K, and as mentioned, thrown that device down onto the floor. Unfortunately for MIBR, they're not going to have that option of rotating back to the A site like we saw them in these previous mid-round situations because bomb is key. Yeah, and this is, you know, it's it's kind of a honeypot for MIBR. They know where the bomb is, but so do Ents. And Fallen will go ahead and take the first, first risk in this 3v5, trying to spot down the lower ramp. It baits out utility and response, and that's not a game that they can win. Ents have so much more to work with at this point on top of their significant man advantage. Three players on the site. And MIBR have to find another route, another way to, to draw attention without making it obvious what they're doing. And there's an opening. Sure. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Sergey. Beautiful headshot here. Drops Fallen as Cold Zera drops the grenade and takes off some of his health. But uh, Ents, they're just holding this one hard. They've had their eyes up. Utility continuous. You saw the smoke, the re-smoke, and an additional smoke. It's not good for the lungs, but Ariel might not be good for the life of MIBR. Longevity cut down. He gives chase to Cold Zera, and the last man's Phelps just on the side here. He will get a single kill, but can he stay standing? The CT's running in on him, and he's going to be all right. One AUG move forward into this round. His first kill as well here on train. But still, it's that dreaded 7-0 start. Absolutely. And if you had to notice, obviously, uh, Ents are on fire as of uh, round five. But here it is, Sergey, just looking incredibly skillful. <laughs> like, I mean, an over, over the rainbow flick at a very awkward angle to, to get that third kill in the rounds. Just a fantastic performance from him so far. Um, what else happened there? That was just crazy. Um, Sergey playing back again, getting a couple kills on the yeah. upper Brock box halls. Uh, you know, it's MIBR. I, I, I'm actually I'm curious to see your thoughts on this. MIBR making contact using upper B over and over. Never uh -huh. any utility off of it. You know, you've got Taco with the Deagle trying to get a headshot. And now we're, we're watching Cold Zera be positioned there with that AWP. Mm -hmm. but, but I have to say, Ents, they, they were so cool in their positioning that nobody ever went around that train. Despite Cold Zera waiting for what seemed like a good 40 seconds, seconds he never saw anyone yeah you know they were so content to just sit in their positions and wait for that inevitable hit from the brazilians and you gotta add you know the conversation becomes about like strategy versus mechanics because they see sergey in that spot and uh, you know we have to talk about that in a second uh flashes yeah, this out for lexi one. b is alu ops taco and all players from mibr are getting melted oh my that was a gun round mohan uh, yeah, i didn't look like one but um you wouldn't lie about it uh that was one of the fastest rounds we've seen so far uh, in this game, and it was, in fact, a full buy-up for MIBR. Throwing caution to the wind, deciding to just rush outside, yeah. falls to the wall. I mean, I, I can respect it, right? Like, there's, there is an unarguable change of pace between this eighth round and what we've seen prior as they've, you know, tried to set up into that B-bomb site, occasionally trying to, to play rotations back in the mid-round. Mm -hmm. Rotations created, of course, because of constant man disadvantages. Uh, you know, and they, they seem to be coming out on top of these first kills over and over. So yeah. that's not going to help MIBR at all. But now the confidence starts to boil over. Alu going to stand inside the flames, still able to take down that first body. And as we said, opening frags for Ents over and over. That's a big stat for sure. Um, and Taco in that position knows. If he waits, uh, it costs him nothing. And he gets that info and he doesn't get opt. Uh, the molly damage is done and he can get away clean. But instead he peeks into it and obviously is full of regret at the moment. Um, and now it's just on these two. Fallen with the discount off. Does a bit of damage, but that's it. Oh my goodness. Now back to that conversation about Sergey, because for me, that looks like a counterplay. He's playing opposite spools. He's in a position where if they go upward, they should have the advantage versus him. He's just so he's just been so amazing that he's winning he's winning unfavorable duels without help from his teammates. Yeah. If if people come out the lower ramp, that's kind of what he wants. He can play with the wood, he can peek out late, he can catch them as they're focused on Z. If his teammate comes in on the rotate, he gets a lot of uh, audible information from from that lower ramp uh, before anybody can actually come into his line of sight. And there's a lot of ways for him to win, but even though MIBR are responding to that adequately, they're still losing out on the duels. And that's not something you want to see at, uh, for MIBR, especially not here in Brazil, right? This is going to be a tournament uh, where everybody is going to be on their side. Obviously not here on day one because there's no crowd, but I'm sure they're with Ooh. him in spirit. X7 going to get nailed. That is Phelps to trade off the top of the dumpster. 
But sure enough, once more, Ents opening pick. They lost it immediately. But I mean, they are throwing grenades like Astralis at the moment. You know, the amount of frag grenade kills we've seen, the amount of damage that's been dealt by it already. Excellent utility, continuous smoke grenades as well. I feel like Ants are making good decisions when it comes down to, you know, whether to use or hold those pieces of utility. But they're not the only team in the server with grenades. It is MIBR to respond with a smoke of their own. Yeah, they've got full belts too. Um, Ants have thrown them all appropriately, as we can see by the, you know, the health remaining on, um, on the players left over. But um, if MIBR don't find a spot to use their grenades adequately, they're going to be useless as well. Now, Cold Zera is up here at the top of Ivy. His position, certainly known. It looks like we'll Ooh. go through the opposite side of the smoke, but Alexi is ready. Yeah, 100% prepared. Even wants another. There you go. Oh, I'll take that back. Three health for Phelps is enough to at least have a chance at a peak, but he is cut down immediately, and Taco takes the high road. 25 seconds left on the clock. Excellent long-range headshot, and seems to have a read as to the other player's positioning. I mean... We know Taco can come in clutch. He's got the positioning as well. Once more, he's gotten around to the side of the train, oh. and the CTs don't know this. Did but he's running out of time, Mohan. There it is. Ten seconds left, and he finds another kill. It's just left on the last of Sergey, who's just going to hold the bomb site because he's fine. No time. Taco loses to the clock. Yeah, he didn't have an option there. He did have to kind of just peruse around the bomb train and see if he could get that kill. Luckily, but there's no chance that he was going to go ahead and, and get the bomb plant. At least he recovers an op. Maybe that was on his mind um, as a secondary goal. It's but answer at 10 and 0, man. It, what is happening? Unfortunate situation there for Taco where, you know, he thinks he has to just sprint for the bomb, whatever not. But those yeah. last five seconds that he did have to run around, Sergey was, you know, two meters to his right. Yeah. But uh, how many times in that round as well did Taco just miss a body by a pixel? You know, unfortunate lack of information there for the Brazilian. Costs him, and like you said, 10-0. I mean, Ents. This is the kind of team that looks like they might find themselves in, I don't know, like a major finals? Yeah, we, we've seen kind of MIBR go through all, like five stages of grief almost uh, with the kinds of rounds they've thrown in there. At first, they, they, they start to work on these defaults slowly. And we've, we're already, you know, 20, 20 or so seconds into the round, two players have gone down. Um, and they've not made up for that whatsoever. Alu goes ahead and gets another kill. Fur finally answers back, but it's still just 2v4 at the moment. Cold Zera and Fur are worn down to 44 and 24 health respectively. I uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do want to take a moment and just talk about like what what the hell is going on. Um, first of all, it's losing defaults, like adequate adjustments, but not getting the kills is a, is a major problem. Not getting not winning the opening duels, which can be close to 50 50 sometimes is OK. But when it's like when it's like 90 10, you know, that that's not that's not acceptable. And there's it's going to be hard to come back from that, especially when ends look like they're continuing to be on form. Um, MIBR threw in a fast strategy outside, but it looked like a Hail Mary, and it's probably looked like that to Ents as well, who had a significant utility advantage. And once you, what you do when you start bringing in all of that money is you just throw a couple of grenades routinely every single round to T-Con, um, your Molly Smoke or your Molly Flash, and then you get someone in ladder, and you do that first. And then if, if the other team wants to rush inner, well, you've been so confident about your holds, you trust Sergey to do that. And that makes those rushes a lot more difficult. It's much easier to get away with something like that when you've conditioned your opponent at all. Right. When you've gotten them used to you going inner all the time, or if you've gotten them used to you doing some fast stuff, but in different ways. And in, in that round, it felt too bare bones, um, as if MIBR were almost out of ideas. Now we're into, after this, after that tech pause, another kind of half force. They've got an, a Mac 10 a few upgraded pistols, and uh, armor on a few players. Rush inner. Yeah, another big old hyper-aggressive play falling on the forefront with that Mac 10 smacks down Sergey. And Ariel's going to actually manage himself through the smoke, but at this point, the T's are so deep in the bomb site that you'd think they hold on. Remember, this isn't a full-fledged buy, so they're already content with what's happened, but it's a tantalizing task to close out this round, and Cold Zera could be the difference maker off the AK, finding one. Phelps' CZ comes up dry, and still Cold Zera resides behind the oil tankard. He's going to just wait. 
Time is definitely to his favor at the moment, and so is the numbers game. X7, last man left, catches Cold Zera with the headshot, but now he has to truck along towards the bomb, and he envelops it in smoke, jumping on top to the taps of fur, he falls. It's MIBR on the board. And they finally take one as fur dies to the bomb at the end, so five dead, but MIBR still have a lot of money left over, so... Uh, this is going to work out quite well for them. It's it's funny that we see that happen on this kind of like half force up round, but we'll certainly see a lot of those at this tournament. Um, and it does come down to a classic inner rush. Uh, what more is there to say? They take out Sergey, right? They win the opening duel. They know where Sergey's playing. They finally get the better of him. It's a round where it's 4-1 with four outside at the beginning. So ends have like a slightly bad read on the situation. And MIBR pretty much just said, let's just try this. And it ended up working out. You get that. That'll be one. But uh, to, have, to have a substantial half, you've obviously got to get more rounds than that. Four would be okay. But with that round, we can't kind of discern how they're going to win yeah. future rounds. And I think that's the main problem. But what we can do is take that collective sigh of relief with the rest of Brazil. It's not a 16-0. It's not a 16-0. Yeah, that would be rough. But might not be far from it. We'll see if Alu can cut down the numbers. He does have Sergei by his side. Again, this dynamic duo on the inner bomb site has been fantastic when tested. Cold Zera back to the high road. Has an op at his feet if he wants to swap over, but he finds himself alone in a one versus five. What's he got going for him? The fact that he hasn't been seen, and he has already gotten this deep into the B bomb site. But eventually, rotators will come over, you'd think. Man, this is an upset, but it's... It's like, even within the rounds, it's it's not like they lose one guy and then they slowly lose the round. They lose right. like two to three in 20 seconds, and then they and then they just fall flat. They don't get anyone close to a clutch besides maybe Taco in that one round. And on top of not getting the entries and everything else, they're, they're simply not getting anything going and losing all of their potential options later in each round by dying so early on with no answers. Uh, they, they, they've got to clean this up so much, and, and there's not really much time to do it. This round is almost old, uh, over, and Cold Zera is only thinking about saving at the moment. He's got an AK in their spawn, and maybe they won't look here, but is living enough? Maybe for some. <laughs> maybe for some. He's good. He's going to let it slide. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, he just went for it. Yeah. And he almost got it. That one's got you on the edge of your seat. Not that the scoreline should. Still 11 rounds up and over, but the rebuy's here. I mean, you can't you can't can't blame it on the veto for MIBR. They're happy to play train. Ents are happy to play course, train. It's yeah. not a surprise to anybody that it came down to this map. Could say there's a couple of maps they could have played on, but the chances would have probably been similar, and the the scoreline should be not anywhere near this. Uh, so we're gonna take it for what it is. It's a beautiful sight to behold, such a strong start from Ents right out of the Major. You know, there was a lot of doubts in terms of, like, the consistency of those sorts of results, but if you take this best of one, which isn't much, yeah. as an inkling as to what could come, remember, they play Astralis after on oh. round two. <laughs> oh my fur. He just pops them wide open here on this A-bomb site. It's, it's left on Sergey alone, who's making a bunch of a ruckus as he just jumps on top of the site. There's a flank inevitably coming, but Fur could close it, and he will. Opens up shop, closes at the end of the day. That's the second for MIBR. That was a crazy three-piece. Oh, my goodness. Very, very nicely done from Fur. Just tap dancing across that top train. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we probably have the first ace of the tournament, and it was also a fantastic ace. This third shot is absolutely crispy clean. Uh, and oh. then, you know, the last two thoroughfare. But, uh, but uh, that, I mean, that's one way to get your team fired up. It's just, it's just, it's so late, man. It's so late into the game. And again, I think that you can, I, I can repeat your point that came after the first round win for MIBR, which was like, this isn't something that's going to consistently happen as we close out this half. You know, we had, we had three CZs on the B site in a full-fledged rush and an ace from Fur. Yeah. That is the, that is the entirety of your T side so far from the Brazilians. And this right here is their 15th and final chance at a round on the board in the opening half. So ends take part in some IV aggression. They get the kill. Once again, get away clean. Like, there's not even a trade. There, there are opening duels that go your way that aren't that meaningful if the other team trades immediately. And on T side, it's worth even more. Um, it's always riskier and harder uh, for, for a CT to pull out an aggressive option. But then to just to, to be able to run, to run away with that with 500 HP 
uh, it's just it's inexcusable, and there's not much else you can say about it. it slows the round down for my MIBR, which is one problem. Then they have to figure out how to do this without a player. That player happens to be Fallen. Um, you know, Phelps is going to pick up the op because he's nearby. I mean, he might come back and give that to Cold Zero, or just hold on to it and see what happens. Who knows? But uh, again, you know, every advantage in Ence's favor at the moment. It's a congregation of the T's towards T-Con. Cold Zero might be poised for maybe a Z smoke as they try something very basic outside. The rotations are out though, I don't know why. Back of Z smoke maybe? Phelps is up, good for one. Aerial, excellent. Two kills for him and falls back, but he lands in the lap of Taco, who's actually unable to catch the kill. It's Ariel across the kill feed. 11 health at the end of the round is all he needs. He will then take that top spot at 18 and four in a single half. The entirety of Ents in the double digits. They barely needed Alu, and he had some excellent B site rounds. It was brought up that like X7 was a big reason why they had such an amazing playoff run. Yeah. I feel like he's kind of been, he was kind of like Skadoodle for Cloud9, where he had a That's fantastic a major, but you know performances outside of that were spotty. You knew he was good, but he couldn't always bring that out. But here, I mean, it wasn't the X7 show. He did do well, but everybody just did well. And it was, again, multiple kills in the, in the opening 20 seconds for Ents that allowed them to, to have such dominant starts, um, which they also proceeded to close out cleanly. Like, there was just never any trouble. A uh, couple of Hail Mary rounds that MIBR were able to win, as you, as you mentioned, just for getting that ace and uh, obviously the B rush on the half eco. But when all is said and done, 13-2 for Ents. And they're moving into a B site exec with these pistols on the T side. For Tippity Taps downrange, will find himself one headshot, and it's Taco from the spool to nab one as well. Three versus three, bomb planted. We've got that insurance policy as a player in the back of the halls, but all right, why not? Fallen flying forward, wrecks the face of X7, and Phelps takes Alexi. So, Sergey, what are you made of, bud? Three counter terrorists coming in and one terrorist going out. Excellent retake there from MIBR. The headshots were crisp. Yeah, five, a kill a piece for MIBR, a very clean retake. Uh, it was solid and get the bomb down, uh, which is great for them. But we can kind of start to, to see at least if MIBR have a CT side, they'll have a fair chance on it now, which is which is very good. Two, two augs bought immediately, three in fact, and Fur will go ahead and uh, get an MP9. So they've got a good balance of long and short range guns. Um, as we move into round 17. Uh, pretty pretty crispy stuff. That was a really nice falling USP shot <laughs> from Fallen. I guess it's all in the name. So what's next? We've got pistols scattered around. Three Deegs, P250, Flash. You know, one flashbang can make a world of difference, but so can an MP9. Sergey just got shredded. I like the aggression from Fallen, up close and personal, straight out the gate, and then falls back within the site. There's a lot to talk about with MIBR on their CT side, uh, especially on train, the way that uh, Fallen's been uh, opting the back of red and how uh, for, for to take control of Ivy and how Phelps has taken over first position at the E-Box and also at ladder and how that's worked out. And I, I've seen it been bad and good, but overall their train has been quite successful. So um, I think so far the changes have been positive, but it's, it's again, interesting to, to kind of Try to compare that to previous the previous iteration of MIBR. Fur locks it down with the AUG on the lower ramp. But there's still a couple of eagles left over. Done. No footing in this one for Ents. That flash didn't seem to help their exit from ramp. Easy clean up there for Fur just tapping off the AUG. Spies in play. Uh, no, no off this time around. It won't be that big of a problem. Let's go ahead and see what uh, what Ents want to want to how how the Ents want to start the tempo of of their T side. They're going up against five Augs. They've got AKs themselves. They can guess whether or not MIBR have an op for themselves. Uh, I don't think it'll change too much. Seems like so far they're trying to draw attention outside. They have baited out some utility in response, which is quite good, especially the more expensive stuff. I mean, we can't underrate. Uh, how important it is to hold on to your incendiary for as long as you can. Uh, finally, MIBR move into what they deem as safe positions. And it seems like Ents want to try to re-exec off of those initial flashes. 
bait out some pieces of utility and then go back in for round two. Everybody was into their position so quick. MIBR four players A straight out the gate now having hesitations. They'll shuffle one man over through Z. Keep a second player within it here in the form of Phelps. So we've got eyes all across the map, but we certainly have Ents poising for this A site. Absolutely biding their time. Um, no IV control here, and we look at the clock and say, oh, they had time to take it, but the smokes are in. Yeah, and the player's out. We've got one sitting on the other side of this T-Con. Oh, this is almost like a two and a half or three tier execute where they throw that sandwich smoke to deny vision, but they've got more smokes to come. Yeah, those smokes gonna block off the vision of Cold Zera, finds himself in a mist, in a foggy haze. Still stands, but it's Phelps to do first work. Fallen looking for kills, but all the kills have been taken by his teammates. That's four for MIBR and no response from Ents at all. Perfect opening gun round, so it seems. Flawless in the end. Yeah, and Phelps a huge contributor, obviously, with those four kills. I like the thought for Ents. I, I, I like that they did the, the initial flashes, and even though they only cost a couple hundred bucks, they baited out some utility. They also shook up MIBR, who tried to get into their positions. Then they had to make a read as to whether or not Ents were going to execute off the back of that. And then we have that what you would normally see is the first tier execute, which is a sandwich smoke to come down for Ents, and that wasn't even the end of it. Um, MIBR throw more utility in response, are rattled again, and then are probably fearful of some kind of uh, inner fake, but instead, and Ents throw the rest of their smokes and make sure not to use too many to make it seem like there's three or four players outside Tcon, and uh, still get dominated. So good for MIBR to be clairvoyant in that situation, um, trust their instincts maybe, not, not bite on the fakes, the multiple slight fakes that we saw in that round. And now Ents will try their hand at B, this time with only pistols. This is where first succeeded from last time round, but players do get passed. Nice damage versus Taco, eats a dink. That's gonna be the bomb plant at the very least. Ents will be happy to at least have something to walk away with. But here comes the flurry of frags and firepower. MIBR just all in on the retake already. Alu on the other side of the flames finds nothing. X7 to the top. Not even killing Taco. That's five survivors once more for MIBR and six rounds as well. Yeah, it's big for their money, though. The, the problem is now there. it seems that the, the threshold for how much money you have is, or the I guess the threshold for how much money you need has been lowered um, because I guess you get diminishing, diminishing returns at a certain point because of the loss bonus and the way that works. Um, and basically what would happen with the change is that just that the comeback mechanic has become stronger. So if you're losing rounds in the second half, well, it's still easy for you to get those last few or have more chances to, to try to buy into them. And to have some money remaining after this enormous buy, they got the plant last round, that helped a bit. And MIBR starting this out with a read that Ants were probably going to try something fast outside. They were incorrect about it. It cost them a fair bit of utility. The, oh, the Molotov is just a bit off. And Sergey hops in front of it, takes Phelps out. Key player for the front of A site. A man who got a 4K versus their rifle exec on a round previous. Now what? What's the follow-up? We saw MIBR struggle at the man disadvantage throughout the first 15. This time to the CT side. Still, they'll keep the numbers heavily stacked up on A. Solo B player. But a looming threat that seems silent at the moment. Ents, they've just disappeared. They have slowed it down quite a bit as we go past the minute mark. We have seen that Ents have avoided taking IV control. We know that they like to do it in their other matches. This time around, doesn't seem like to be to be their prerogative. A couple of nades thrown in her, and here it is. The Econ players exit off of one flashbang. Eyes oh. on Cold Zera. Fur, fur could be huge, but so could Cold Zera. He is going to find X7 first. He's amidst the push from the T's, but Alu clears him. That ladder player has to die because Bomb needs to arrive in time. There's only 25 seconds left, and Fallen, well, he's on top of the bomb site, looking for the players to walk forward. Taco helps him, but he barely sees the player on top of the trains. And now he finds himself alone, as Taco's been slain, but he's wary. He's wary that there's someone still behind him, and he would be right in assuming so. The doubled back bomb carrier to the B site could have actually done this. Fallen would have had a chance to go huge. And he still has an opportunity, but it gets taken right away. Sergey, who opens this round, closes it in fashion. Damn, that was that was so nice from Ents. The, the readjustment there as they 
They went to outside. They totally debilitated for in the ladder. I mean, Cold Zero was there outside. He was doing his best to lurk around. He got that initial kill, but then got traded out immediately after. Alu also does his part here, um, and that was taking out Cold Zero. But uh, it was it was really Fur who got mollied out. No one had to come down the ladder, but since outside control was traded, then they were able to put him in a position where he had to peek outside, and they were ready for that. Yeah. And it can be hard killing that, that ladder player, so it's crazy that they were able to do so so easily. And not only able to kill him, but also, you know, they didn't, they didn't get blindsided by any of the other CTs on that A bomb site. Yeah. You know, it's, it can be such a threat to have eyes on a guy like Phelps here, while also working elsewhere, oh. but he's had enough. That's two quick kills and an immediate fallback once more for MIBR. Not shying away from those initial aggressions. You know, you don't want to give away too much for free and play scared. A prime example of how doing so can pay off in dividends. So. 14-6, 5v3. Sergey curious towards this B site. And now again, because of the new economy, they're going to lose a lot less money next round. We'll see another full buy here from Ents no matter what happens. MIBR not only have to worry about winning the round, but doing so uh, convincingly. Otherwise, they will be on the back foot. There's, this is, this is tough. I mean, not only are they knocking on match point, but Ents looks so damn fierce. You think that, uh, even though MIBR have a man advantage, they're not going to get out unscathed. 3v5 situation. And the lower ramp is crowded by the T's. It's all to support with the flashbang. Two terrorists down ramp. Fur in the corner, blinded, but hasn't given himself away. And as Lexi gets the first kill, now it's going to be Fur to activate, taking so much spam damage from Sergey. And Olu even finds a pick, so we found ourselves in even footing here. Two versus two. Phelps goes flying forward towards the site, not going to be able to deny plant, and that puts Olu in a position to succeed. All the while, Phelps is going to be asking himself, where the hell did Sergey get off to? There's his answer. Inside of the smoke, he is found. Fallen, watching the high ground, anticipating the peak. Alu has to go for it, and he does it. Therefore, it's MIBR with yet another. Damn, Alu had the right play. He did pick the lower ramp, which is a 50-50, but he also tried to read that uh, MIBR were going to get off of it because it was so early into the bomb yeah. plant. And that's fine. That's his read to make. You know, you can't really get mad about that uh, if you're Ents. But again, uh, they it was MIBR who didn't win the round unscathed, and in fact, looked like they could have lost that at a couple of moments. Good play from Phelps to move up so quickly as the bomb was getting planted, knowing that the teammate on Ents was going to peak last uh, and that he would reposition no matter what because it was a 2v2. Um, but this all comes down to, to Phelps for the most part. I mean, staying alive by himself. And that's one of the reasons, again, you have such an apt player who's so good individually, playing a spot that is so far away from his teammates. But that normally has, uh, that has a lot of cover. I mean, ladder can be pretty safe for one person. It's just that you, you're like, you're like America's most wanted or Brazil's most wanted or whatever you want to say. Uh, in the ladder, everybody wants you dead first. Everyone wants ladder control. It's just not always easy to get. Ents have double the rounds, lots of money left over on this buy, and uh, even some in the bank here. Alu, 5400. Nobody down to zero. Ariel with 2k. Uh, and, and, and MIBR are going to be fully well aware of that. Whoa, whoa, Taco. He gets flashed forward. Gets himself an immediate kill again, MIBR. Not shying away from the initial engagement. They did the same thing in ladder room with Phelps previously. This time it's that B hit, and it finds the lone wolf in Sergey. Out of the round early on. Minute 20, T-Con control for Ents, and lots of Augs honed forward for them. T's worst nightmare. You know, we kind of saw how just like, okay, when it rains it pours with the Augs outside. Um, I would be hard pressed to assume that that would change. Smoke comes cascading over the outside site. And now fearful of probably an incendiary. Cold Zero is going to fall back and turn his attention to Ivy. He's in a safe position, but he's receded and given up a lot of map control. They're not finding anybody. No matter how hard they look, MIBR have kept themselves in the shadows. The creeps emerge. Traded straight away, Fallen finding one on Ivy's side as Cold Zera extends the advantage and leaves Alu all alone. 25 seconds left, off in hand. And now position known. Great anticipation of Fallen's peak. Sees the player on the train and knows there's another in the office. He's just dancing around the ladder. He's being pinched though. There is a second player 
in Taco trying to find him. 10 seconds in Alu? Are you kidding me? This would be the 1v4. Did you hear him? Did Cold Zera get hidden? Yep. He did, he did. <gasps> Alu's oh my god! god! All four frags on the A site, 15 health the difference, and 15 rounds for Ents now. Oh my god, what a way to get to match points. That was absolutely atrocious from MRBR. Let me just say that first. None of these kills needed to happen, especially not that one. Um, but on top of that, you know, Taco coming out of a safe spot. This is, I mean, normally a 1v4 has happened and everybody has to mess up for it to be possible. <laughs> Look at Alexi Here's just Alu like, to capitalize. Uh, Alexi just like wide-eyed at the moment. Wow. I mean, it was quite a show. It was a disaster for MIBR. Um, but it gave, it, you know, I mean, I didn't even say it. That was crazy. Kind of like that. That frag was crazy. Next. How do you recover from You can't recover from that mentally, right? I mean... Yeah, you just go charging into the B site, so it seems. Bomb up top. Taco down beneath. What a long range headshot. He still manages another. Alu's going to try to take the place of his teammates. And he was he... all out of good shots. He used them all last round. Yeah, everybody's getting piled up here, Mohan. X7, last man up. MIBR not done just yet. I mean, I'm down to see more rounds if we get more rounds like that. We've already had a fantastic off or, uh, fur ace with the AK. I'm just... We had a fur ace. We had an Alu 1v4. <laughs> yeah. Bro, it's the first game of the day. I know. It's the first, it just started. Everything just started. Doot, doot. <laughs> that was pretty nasty. Uh, and Taco gets two here. That's an MP9. One fish, one beef. MP9. Making it work. Single AK-47 for Alu. Sergey, the first casualty here of round 24. You can't hide from Paul. You can try. You can try. You're all, everyone's entitled to try. You have that option. You just probably won't be able to. Yeah, no one's entitled to succeed. Aggressive presence can go underwater. Um, and it's, it's a blue kill feed. MIBR stands strong. Alexi, Deagle, last alive. Done. He will get taken out, and MIBR have the chance to recover and get into double digits. Get back some dignity, yeah. you know, for the game. Yeah, in, pick it up and also, the they've got another map to play today. So at least show themselves that it wasn't a total travesty. But at a certain point, I mean, MIBR is still in this. It was... It was, it was as bad as it was for MIBR. It was a 4v1 that Alu had to, had to win against, right? Yeah, so, very true. You know, that was a pretty oh. dominant round versus rifles that MIBR had. They've had good holds outside. It's kind of reminiscent of MIBR's T side where, you know, an all-out B rush and an ace from Fur were really the only two key pieces that they had going for them. What have Ents had so far on this offense? Well, you have an Alu 1v4. You know, this isn't, uh, this isn't any consistency from the terrorist forces. But their efforts are continuous. Oh, They'll they, fly they down the ramp off the flash. They shot them both. Done. Oh. Cleared that bomb site and could very well be staring victory in the face here. 3v5 retake attempt. Sergey just burns fallen to a crisp. They said Brazilian barbecue is something, Launders, and it's no disappointment. Poor fallen, however, walks away charred to a crisp. Cold Zera, next up. One body is his, second as well. Gonna have to go for the reload, and it